Hello, uh, today I'm going to talk about marine equation. I got a couple of questions about how to find this, uh, how to find and how to use this equation and how to find marine factors. Uh, okay, so, so far we know that in order to analyze any questions in this chapter, which is chapter 6 of Shigley's book, uh, we need to find some information about the material. And those informations are ultimate strength and yield strength. We can get this information from some tables or we can find them online. Once you get those informations, you can find SA prime based on your ultimate strength. SA prime is a stress a endurance strength for an ideal material. Equation 6.8 in 10th version of Shigley shows the relationship between SUT and SA prime. Uh, when we get that SA prime, we need to find SE endurance strength for our material based on SE prime. So SE is a function of SE prime. And the equation that has to be used here is called marine equation and this equation is a couple of factors like Ka, Kb, Kc, Kd, Ke, Kf times Se prime. Okay, uh, there is one thing here that I want to mention before I continue. All these k's are lower k, k are lower case k's. So capital, for example, capital K F is different from lower case K times F. This is a miscellaneous factor, marine factor, but this is a stress concentration, fatigue stress concentration. So don't confuse them. It's so confusing in this chapter. Anyways. Okay, so I'm going to talk about all these factors, how to find them, what they are. Um, the first one is called surface factor. Surface factor, Ka, is a function of material. So it's a function of SUT. In order to find Ka, You need to use this equation a sut to the power of b. So this coefficient a and the exponent b has to be found from some table. In tenth edition of Shigley's book, the number of this table is two. So these two numbers can be found from table six two. Okay, if I just go to the book here, you see that's table 6.2. Uh, and if our finish is hot rolled, for example, if you're here, factor A will be either 14.4 when you are working imperial system or 57.7 when you are working SI system. And exponent B is the same for both scenarios. There is one important point here that we have to... Uh, notice about that and that is this SUT if you are working in imperial system the unit of this SUT has to be KPSI so if we have any other units first we need to com convert that one to KPSI then we can substitute that one here and find KA and if we are working the SI metric let's say metric system you need to use a megapascal so if for example if your SUT is in gigapascal first you need to convert that to megapascal and substitute the number here in this equation and then you can get a surface factor so that's easy we can find that one it's straightforward like we don't have any problem for this one 
Uh, for KF, this is miscellaneous factor as I mentioned here. Uh, it's usually, I, I, most of the time, that's one. Unless uh, it, is it is given to you in the question or it is said uh, or you can somehow figure out from the basic of the, from the dynamic of the problem. But in 99%, this is one. I'm going to talk about KB after. Before I want to talk about KB, um, I want to talk about KC, this one. This is called loading factor. So loading factor should be somehow related to the uh, loading of the system. We can have three different type of loading. We can have axial loading, we can have bending, and we can have torsion. If we have axial loading, KC will be 85%. If we have bending, that will be 1. And if we have torsion, that will be 59. Okay, so it's all depend on the loading of the system. Uh, KD is temperature factor. For very high temperature, for something more than 70 Fahrenheit and uh, let's say 1000 Fahrenheit, KD will be a function of the temperature. For other, for lower temperature or when temperature is not given to you, KD is 1. Uh, this equation is equation 627. There is one important thing here that we need to notice that this temperature here has to be inserted in Fahrenheit. So if a temperature is given to you in centigrade or in any other units, first you need to convert that one to Fahrenheit, then you can use that in your equation. Ke, this factor is reliability factor. When you want to find Ke, you need to uh, use an equation, or you can just go to table six five, and based on the desired reliability that it is asked, you can use your KE. For example, if your reliability is 50%, your KE will be 1. If your reliability is 90%, your KE will be 0.897. If the reliability is 95%, your KE will be point eight six eight so in this table ke is sorted based on your reliability okay so among all these factors uh, the only one that has not covered yet is uh, kb this one KB is size factor and it is a function of geometry, loading, and rotational situation of the system. So KB is size factor. Okay. If we have axial loading, and the system K 
KB will be 1. If we have bending or if we have torsion, then we need to look at the geometry of the system. Before I want to talk about the geometry, I'm going to divide uh, this subcategory into two uh, regions. One of them is the rotational uh, situation, and the other one is for non-rotational. Uh, in rotational, we can have circular cross-section and we can have a non-circular. And in non-rotational, we can have circular cross-section and non-circular cross-section. Uh, whenever we have non-circular cross-section, we need to find something with, which is called DE, equivalent diameter. So it doesn't matter if it's rotating or not. When the cross section, when the cross section is not circular, we need to find DE. For example, if the cross section is rectangular, if this is B and this is H, we need to find DE first, and DE in this case is 0 0.8, 0.8 square root of HB. So what it means that this system can be equivalent to the shaft, to a circular shaft, with a diameter of DE. So I can substitute this round shaft uh, here with my initial and original rectangular cross-section. Okay. So we don't have any questions when it is non-circular. We have to find an equivalent DE, equivalent diameter. When it is circular, again, we have to find some uh, DE, some amount for DE. Uh, but here, there will be two cases, a rotational shaft and non-rotational shaft. For non-rotational shaft, again, we need to find DE from a table, but for rotational shaft, DE uh, will be 1. Okay, so if I want to summarize what I said, I said uh, for all cases we need to find some DE, equivalent D, but when it is circular and when it is rotating, DE is, sorry, it's not 1, DE is equals to D, the diameter of the shaft. And Finally, this KB is a function of DE. Okay, uh, I'm going to review, I'm going to give you an example here. That's a shaft. This diameter, for example, is 1. And the same diameter here, it's 1. But this is a rotating shaft and this is not rotating this is non rotating shaft okay when it is rotating like this de is equals to d and in this case it's equals to 1 but when it is not rotating 
DE is not 1. And DE will be D times 0.37. So in this case, DE will be 37. So you see we have one geometry here and one type of loading which is either bending or torsional, it's not axial, and we can have two different equivalent D. So we need to look at the rotation situation of the system. If it's rotating, D is equal to D. If it's not rotating, D is equal to um, this number times D. If we had axial loading, we don't care about if it's rotating or not. Because we wanted DE, because we wanted to find KB. If the loading is axial, KB is 1. So we don't do anything at this, at this point. I'm going to go to the book and I'm going to review what I said from the book. This table, table 6.3, gives us equivalent D based on geometer. So if we have a shaft and if it's not rotating, we need to find DE based on this one. And if there is a rectangular cross section or I shaped cross section or something like this, which is like the web of a T beam, uh, we need to use uh, these equations. Once we get DE, we need to go to the equation number 20. So based on the diameter, so this is our DE in this point. If you're an imperial system, the first two lines works for us. So if DE, for example, if it's one inch, we just need to put it here and find KB. If DE is, for example, five inches, we need to find, we need to put that D E here and we need to find K B. And if you're working in SI units in metric, uh, based on where we are, we can find our K B uh, from either of these two equations. And this equation is valid just for bending and for torsion. When it's axial loading, K B is equals to one. Okay, and I can show you the table for KE before I finish this video. So that was the equation for KD, temperature factor. We put the temperature here and we find KD based on that one. You see there is no other parameters here. And this is an equation for for KE based on reliability percentage. So for example, if reliability is 95%, we need to use that number as our KT, KE. Sorry. Um, if reliability is 50%, KE is one. Okay, if you have any other questions about uh, this video, uh, feel free to comment below and I will answer your questions. Thank you.